Hello, everybody. It's about that time. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by. Ooh, this is already been a treat. This is the second one I've got from uh, Dave sent me uh, from uh, this is 5050's Eclipse Imperial Stout and this is the purple wax. This is the one that was aged in the Elijah Craig barrel. So the last one we did was done in the old Fitzgerald barrels and this is his favorite. He likes this one over the old Fitzgerald barrel. So. I gave the last one a 10. I thought it was awesome. And a lot of people agreed with me, said that it was uh, that. But I had some of my subscribers uh, said that it was too boozy and didn't like it and it was too expensive. And I can see where they're coming from on that. I mean, not a lot of people want to spend 28 to $35 for one bottle of a 22-ounce beer, even though it takes a lot to to brew a beer that big and then put it in a barrel for two over 200 days. Uh, I mean, there's a lot involved to making this beer, and somebody standing on the bottling line, writing on the each individual bottle uh, what year it is and everything. So there's a there's a lot involved there. So it all depends on how deep your pockets are and how well you like the beer and what you're willing to spend. So with that being said, Dave sent these to me, so he spent a, a small fortune, and uh, once you add the shipping, you got about seventy-five dollars he spent to, to buy these two beers and send them to me. So Dave. Thanks, bro. I appreciate you sending me these beers. Uh, uh, I know this is going to be just as awesome as the last one was. And like I said, my scale goes to 10, and I gave the last one a 10. I can just imagine what this one's going to be like. All right, let's get on with this one, guys. The uh, food pairings for this, uh, well, 50 is out of California. This is American Double Imperial Stout, 9.50 ABV. Uh, this was a brewed once beer, and, and they've done it before. I mean, uh, the 2011 had a purple wax on it too and the 2012 has a purple wax on it so maybe they're going to start doing it once a year now the last one said retired this one does not say retired so I don't know what the deal is we'll have to wait till next year and see if they produce them again and what kind of barrels they're going to age them in and they do a bunch of different stuff they do brandy and and rye and several different ones there's white wax and all different colors so they're really taking this recipe and expanding and by putting in different kind of barrels to see what it comes up with. So I applaud them for that. Uh, that's a good way to do it. I mean, if you got a good beer and you want to experiment with it, you know, get some different kind of bourbon barrels and rye barrels and and brandy barrels. I mean, you may even put it. You may even see it in a wine barrel. I mean, you, there's all kind of barrels for different. Uh, liquors and fermentables that you can uh, put beer in and, and it adds flavor or different flavors than what you can brew in the beer itself so let's see where this one goes food pairing for this beer is cheese of buttery brie gouda havarti swiss the general thing it says is chocolate so all of your russian imperial styles and all your styles and porters are going to have that chocolate note because of the style of the beer that it is all right, the uh, meat for this one is beef, smoked meat, game, and grilled meat. Glass run, pint, Becker style, the mug, tumbler, the snifter, oversized wine glass. I got the double glass for this one, guys. And this beer can be sold for long periods, or forever and ever, just about. I mean, this beer will keep for 10, 20 years if you want. If you got the nerve or got the uh, patience to sell it that long, I do not. So let's get the wax cut on this one and get into it and see if we. Uh, See if we'd like it as much as we did the other one. Y'all bear with me because it's got a thick coating of wax on this one. I'm not going to pause the camera. And the last beer was an 18-minute beer review. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try not to make this 18-minute beer review. I know that's, that was probably the longest beer review I've ever done. And nobody wants to sit and look at me for 18 minutes at a time. I can sympathize with that. So let's see if we can speed this process up just a little bit. And I'll try not to be so long-winded on this one. But once again, Dave, thank you, brother, for sending these beers to me. I know it was a major expense, and I do appreciate it, buddy.
thick wax on this one. My gosh. They double dipped this one. All right, into the glass we go. Let's go down the center and see what we get. I can smell the bourbon from here. Wow. I can smell it from here. All right, guys, we're going to take this over into the light. There is none. There's absolutely no light at all through there. This beer is black as night. Let's get a nose on it. Heavy bourbon, heavy bourbon. I mean, I think this one is stronger on the bourbon smell than the last one. And I guess if, you know, if you're into the bourbons, uh, maybe the Elijah Craig is a better bourbon than the old Fitzgerald. I do not know because I don't drink bourbons anymore. And those two names, I don't re recollect ever drinking anything like that. Smells very vanilla, coconut, chocolate. But there's big alcohol on this. I mean, this, this, you know, this probably could have been solid for at least several years before we drank it. But I told him I was going to review it. If I do get my hands on another one or, or, or any different ones again, I am going to sell them. I'm going to put them away for two, three, five years before I crack the top on them. Because this is a very boozy beer. But it has such a sweet bourbon, vanilla, chocolate smell. Alright, it's that time. Cheers everybody. Thanks again Dave. You the man. Let's give it a taste. To me, this is, wow. Right off the bat, it's boozy. But on the, as it goes down, you get that coconut and vanilla. It's not burning my throat. It's not that hot. But it is a boozy beer. This beer needs to be salad. I personally think it's just a little more boozier than the last and then the old Fitzgerald. But it has a rich vanilla, chocolate, and maybe even a little coffee and toffee and caramel. That is a big beer. That's a big beer. All right, guys, I told you I didn't want an 18 minute video again on this one. We're going to let it warm up. I might even crack, crack the humidor open and get me a nice cigar and post something on Facebook about what I'm pairing. It's a nice pair is on this one. Might have to get a Drew Estates, my Uzi weighs a ton to go with this one. A nice good cigar with this beautiful beer. Stick around, I'll be right back. We'll do the final comments and the final chug on this one. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little bit left here. Very tasty beer. I personally think this one is just a tad more boozy than the ones from the uh, Old Fitzgerald barrels, but it is what it is, and depending on the barrel and whether it's just got a heavier bourbon inside the barrel when it was aged in the bourbon, will determine whether it's, it's going to transfer into the beer. So, very nice. But once again, these beers are. They're fresh and they're kind of on the boozy side. Even though they're 2012s and this is 2013, these beers can be aged, I would say, anywhere from two to five years very easily, if not ten, if you could hold on to it that long. And the booziness is going to subside a little bit. So let's do the final chug on this one. It's a 10, guys, to me. It's, it's just as good as the other one. But like I said, it's definitely boozier to me than the last one was. But beer tastes are subjective. What I may think is a little boozier, the next guy I might think, oh, this is perfect. I mean, it's, and like I said, I've had some of my subscribers say it's a very too pricey beer. 
and sell it on the in, on the boozy side. Uh, and a lot of people wanted to be able to drink these. They pay that much for it. They want to drink it right away. And beers like this uh, can be selling for quite a while, and the booziness will subside a little bit. So, not wanting this beer review to be another 18 minute. -er. Let's go on and see what the ratings are on for this one. Uh, beer Advocate says it's 99, which is their world class rating on the beer. And Rate Beer says it's 100 overall and 95 in the style. So, very tasty. If you can afford to to pick up one of these and have the availability that you can pick up one of these. Uh, I don't know, that it's not distributed in Virginia and uh, coming from California, Dave can pick these things up, up and I think he's in Illinois, it's uh, fairly easy. So uh, even though it's a pricey beer, it's definitely worth you know picking one up and putting it away for a while if you don't like it, the booziness of it. So I'd like to have some more of this to put away and, and try this. So I may talk to him and send him some money and have him send a couple more and just put them away for quite a while and see how they change in three years or five years down the road. So, guys, uh, damn awesome beer, Dave. Thanks again for sending these beers to me. I enjoyed them thoroughly. The other half loved it. She loved that. She likes that big bourbon taste. So, different strokes for different folks, I guess, is how, that, how the beer world is. So, if you can get this or if you've had this, give me some comments back on this one. Whether you liked it, didn't like it, I liked it a lot. I liked it quite a bit. So, like I said, I'd like to have one to, or, or two different ones to put away for a while and see how they change after about five years. So, as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. I don't think it'll be this good, but keep our fingers crossed. See you then.